All right, so I, I left off last with Abraham and his son Isaac and Ishmael. So uh, I I wanted to go over more details of a lot of these stories, <clears throat> and I was finding that I wouldn't have the time um, if I wanted to just keep it to one more lecture on on this section. So um, these are stories that you can easily um, find online or just do in the Bible reading. But I just wanted to kind of bring up that essentially. Um, Abraham has a son with one of his Egyptian uh, servants named Hagar and his wife Sarah. Um, there's Isaac born and Jake and, and sorry Isaac and Ishmael. Um, God's favor is with Isaac and Sarah encourage like sees tensions between these two brothers of Isaac and Ishmael and has um, encourages with inspiration by God to have Hagar and his son Ishmael sent off in exile. And yet he is going to be blessed with a mighty nation himself. In Islam, Ishmael is the founder of the Arabs. And in fact, later Jewish writings will use the term Ishmael to refer to the Arabs, uh, the Muslim rulers that they're living in in medieval uh, Jewish writings. Um, but the story for Muslims is that Ishmael is the favor uh, of God and in the biblical story it is of Isaac so that's just something to kind of pay attention to in terms of historic um, rifts if you will okay um, so I'm gonna move from there and then talk about Isaac's sons Jacob and Esau again we have this theme in the Bible of tension between two brothers Esau is the actual favored one of Isaac but the mom favors Jacob, and Esau is this uh, great hunter who um, is always bringing home lots of food that makes Isaac happy. But ultimately, uh, Jacob is able to trick Esau into giving up his birthright by um, basically Esau's hungry, and Jacob says, well, I'm only going to give you some food of the, this here if you give up your birthright to me. And um, he does it. And then when Isaac's in old age and, and essentially blind, um, he gives his blessing to Jacob, thinking it's Esau. And, uh, you know, again, this rift remains. So Jacob then will get all the favors and the blessings, okay? Jacob is significant to this topic because he is going to become Israel, struggler with God, as it means in Hebrew, Yisrael, struggler with ale. Okay, or God. So I have a passage here from Genesis 32, 24 through 32. So if you want to look that up, you know, uh, you can read the whole account and I have it up here on um, the, the PowerPoint. But it's a, it's a very mythic, legendary feel type story. You know, here he wrestles all night with this man that he finds out is really an angel. The angel, is it God, a personification of God? Um, and he has a socket pulled out of his hip um, and a tendon there from this wrestling. And so he's told by this uh, uh, angelic entity that acts as an agent of God or, or whatever. It says, uh, Jacob said, um, it says, uh, the man or, or this entity says to him, your name will no longer be Jacob, but Israel, because you have struggled with God and with men and have overcome. So. Uh, this is where he gets the name change, okay? And then this is where we get the whole idea of the tribes of Israel. So the story then is that out of these 12 sons, there becomes tribes, and God is going to promise this holy land to the tribes of Jacob or uh, Israel. And as we see Judah, remember we had the tribe of Judah, uh, um, and, you know, that was one of the tribes, uh, one of the sons of Israel. And remember, the northern kingdom called itself Israel. Um, for uh, uh, the religious Jewish idea of this land being given by God, that's why it's called Eretz Yisrael, the land of Israel, the land uh, promised to the tribes of Israel. That's a biblical promise. For the, the Canaanites, for Palestinians, uh, for any other people there, 
um, that claim will only be as good as um, belief in the God of Israel would be, uh, assumably, right? Um, and again, as much as this sounds like 100% bears relevance to the current Israel-Palestine conflict, I'm still making the argument that it, you still got to be careful about not reading too much into this. Uh, um, in the sense of trying to understand many of the details that are going to lead to the current conflict. But you can see the seeds of this, though, uh, and the complications um, for a different nationalist narrative by different peoples in the region, right? All right, so Israel's favorite son, or one of his favorite sons, is Joseph. Joseph's an important character, even in Islam. Actually, uh, many of these characters I just all mentioned, Abraham, uh, uh, Isaac, Isaac, and uh, Yaakov, and Yusuf. These are all characters in the Quran. There's actually a book in the Quran, the Muslim holy book, named after Joseph. Um, the story goes is that um, his brothers are jealous of his father's favoritism. Again, we see the theme of tensions between brothers and the issues of blessings and fathers, right? So they, they pretend that he's eaten by a wild animal. They sell him off to be a slave in uh, to Egypt and uh, the father thinks that his favorite son has been killed and when Joseph is in prison and I'm telling you the biblical story that the, the, by the way the, the Islamic story has some slight variants that are significant but I'm not gonna have time to go into here right now I might later when I discuss Islam but in any case um, he is well, he, he becomes a, a servant of a guy named Potiphar and he's a good-looking guy and Potiphar's wife wants to have sex with him um, he refuses she's angered and so she b tells her husband that he's trying to have sex with her uh, and so obviously the husband gets outraged and has him imprisoned while Joseph's in prison he's able to prove that he can interpret dreams that he has some sort of prophetic qualities somehow he goes from there into the court of pharaoh and actually does say things that uh, um, prove useful to the egyptian court and so the story goes that he becomes an important egyptian official then later when there's a famine in the land of uh, israel they uh, are with the israelites that is um, the tribes they come back and ask for help not knowing that that's their brother and he does a test on them to see if they're the same kind of conniving evil brothers or did they change he does some tests on them and he he feels that they're redeemable he then reveals who he really is and uh he gives them uh redemptive forgiveness the family is brought over in egypt and what's going to happen over time is that Egypt, the the uh, Jews in the story will fall out of favor and end up being slaves in the land of Egypt okay and so then we go from there where Moses um, is one of these now enslaved uh, Israelites who then is going to be sent in a, a reed basket as we remember seeing that in the Mesopotamian theme um, He'll be found in uh, in among the reeds in a, a basket, and the Pharaoh's daughter will discover him and raise him in the Egyptian court. He'll then see an Egyptian slave master abusing an Israelite. He becomes outraged, kills him, and now he is a murderer. He flees, and he run eventually becomes a shepherd in the wilderness and and in his kind of exile that he has there he comes across a burning bush god reveals himself to him and he says you have to go save my people moses goes with his brother to pharaoh and he says hey let my people go this is what god wants you to do pharaoh refuses and 10 plagues are put on egypt eventually uh um Pharaoh becomes exhausted at being stubborn. He says, go, fine, get out of here, go. But then he changes his mind and becomes outraged. He goes back to go annihilate all of the Jews. And 
there is a Red Sea. God does a miracle. He parts the Red Sea. The Jews go through it. Pharaoh and his army follows, but then what does God do? He lets the Jews get uh, um, through the water and then sends the wall, walls of water crashing down, killing all the Egyptians. Okay, and uh, then they, uh, the Jews go through the Sinai Desert for 40 years until they get to the land of Canaan to do all the things that are going to happen in the book of Joshua. Okay, while they're there, they're going to have uh, a, a contract with God where on Mount Sinai they make a covenant that they will be God's chosen people and he says I'm going to bless you when you do right and I'll punish you when you don't follow what I say and Moses is the leader um, and this is where we get the idea of Ten Commandments um, I'm gonna have to stop there and of course going from there just to say that Joshua will end up leading these people into the land of Canaan. So that's the story of the Bible. Keep that in mind, again, against what we were uh, learning from the archaeological point of view. And I hope that this information was uh, helpful and not confusing. Uh, please, again, write to me on anything you want clarification on.